Hi, welcome to Desi Plaza TV. This is Madhav. So, when you were around eight years old, tell me what would you be doing? So, if I was eight years old, I would be playing some sandboxes or watching Bugs Bunny shows. But now, today I do have a special guest with me, Akash Bukoti, who might be enjoying the same at his time, but he might be planning uh, to get prepared for a spelling bee competition. And I even know that he was a part of the famous. Uh, Steve Harvey show. Uh, so I'm over here with him to stump him out, which I don't see him as working well. Let's go get, I mean, catch him. So hi, Akash, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, thanks for asking. So before we jump into the interview, I need three promises from you. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, number one. So, Akash, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. So, before we start, I know a bit about your history. You were uh, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You were in Cleveland. Then mm -hmm. you were in San Angelo. Yeah. So tell me, currently, where are you? I mean, where are you living? Um. So. Um. So, hello, Namaskar, Wendy. I'm Nenu Akash Vakoti. Nenu um Naku Animidi Savacharalu Um Um That's fine Akash. And no I will be able to do Targati Lo America Lo Chadavata Nanu Um specific um San Angelo, Texas Lo Chadavanta Nanu. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, like, Akash, uh, I know that uh, you can speak or uh, you know three languages, right? Which mm. all languages do you know? Um, there's English, uh -huh. Telugu, and Hindi. Hindi. I'm, I'm, I can read and write all three languages fluently. Okay, good. Well, like, see, it's up to you. Be comfortable, okay? Whichever language you want me to ask you, I'll, I'll go ahead. You want English? You prefer English or you prefer Telugu? Um, well, <laughs> since this is about spelling bees, I'm going to go for English. Because, yeah, that's well, fine. That's good. You know. So, so you're, you're here with your family, right? Your mom, dad, and your sister. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell, tell us a bit about your dad and your mom and your sis? Yeah, so um, my nana is um, Krishna, Dr. Krishna uh -huh. Um, He's... The um, as, as assistant director of of our local pharmacy, uh -huh. and then I also have my amma, uh -huh. um, who works with me all the time, uh -huh. and then I also have my sister who helps me out a lot, a lot, and it and and she's also. And she's also funny, okay. and also, um, yeah. <laughs> That's so you, basically sort of a. Uh, yeah. So you, your sister, you mean like you fight a lot? No. no? Obviously no. Obviously. I no. do. I like. I barely ever fight. It's not gonna happen. Uh huh. So you think you do you make uh, things messy and she corrects it or, no? No, it's <laughs> sort of. It's sort of the reverse. Sort of the reverse. Because oh. <laughs> she's because she, she's much more playful than me. Oh, that's good.
playing with those, mm-hmm. setting up those moves. I would just, I would just go toward them and I would just play with them like it's just a, like I'm a little kid playing with a regular toy. And that's when I'm just playing with the alphabets here. And that's when you developed this interest towards spelling bee and started. Mm-hmm. And then when I was two, when I was around two and a half years old, I competed in my first spelling bee. Mm-hmm. In, in near the Washington DC area and um, I was still in diapers though. <laughs> but the cool thing is that mm. I passed the written round and got to the orals, right. which is actually pretty um, amazing for the fact that um, I was only two, two and a half years old at mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. and I passed the written round mm-hmm. with, and then I went on to the orals. Okay. So, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I know. I mean, like when yeah, you said you were, you were still on diapers, right? Yes, you were on diapers. Even yeah. when I read when I read about you and when I researched something about yourself, your first uh, spell, I mean, like the first spelling that you told was when your uncle he held a spoon uh-huh. right in front of you. Yes. So tell me, what was the age when you spelled it? Um, that was like. I was barely two years old. Yes, I, mean, I was like, just yeah, I mean, two. Like, I just wanted to hear it from you. Cool. So yeah, so I was barely two. So my uncle, he was feeding me some something with a spoon. Mm-hmm. He showed the spoon to me, and then he said, "Spell spoon." And spelled I spelled it S P O O N. Well, um, actually, before <laughs> that. My, okay. my uncle said S P O O N, so I repeated it. Okay. <laughs> and then the next day, the same uncle asked me to spell the word mm-hmm. spoon. And you spelled. I, yeah, I spelled it S P O O N, and that's when I, and that's when my parents first recognized that I had an interest in spelling. Spelling. I always loved alphabets since I was a little baby, but mm-hmm. but that was the point where I first found out that I had the talent to spell words. And since then, I was in um, spelling bees uh, across the nation. And in 2016, I was the youngest competitor to compete in the national spelling bee, yeah. being only a six years old, that's first grade. Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know how excited you were. I'm, I'm totally excited you having you over here, you know? Okay, yeah, now, thank you. <coughs> and now tell me, like, you, your, your entire room uh, would be stacked with all prizes, right? All trophies here and there, if I'm not wrong? Um, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And then what actually made, did those trophies, I mean, like it led you to be a part of uh, Steve Harvey's show? Or what was, uh, what actually made you to be part of that show? I know that he li- likes you a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, other than that, tell me, what, what, uh, what, how was the journey that you were actually entered into that uh, show? You hardly remember, barely remember, or you're not able to put it in words? I, I'm not able to put it in, in words or... You, you, want to, you want to stand here, jump, so that you want to feel excited, just um, as you are, so that you get, you get, get that energy? Um, not, not much into being a, a little kid, but... That's fine. Uh, okay, so, so, I mean, like, the spelling bee, I know I that... I mean... Mm, good. Yeah, so... They knew that Mr. Harvey was was going to love was going to love how cool how cool spelling was and mm-hmm. well obvious well turns out the same thing. Um, Mr. Harvey was friendly and he was funny. He's nice, right. and he's great with kids. Right, fine. Like so. Me. I know like you, you like a lot, I mean like you like spelling, uh, mm-hmm. spelling uh, words a lot, but how much time do you practice a day? Is that you practice a day or it, it's just like you, I tell a word and you just give me the, I mean like spell it just like this. I do, so for um, uh, probably, I don't know how to express this, but uh, probably about 10, or eight. Ten hours? Per day or something? Um, ten words per day. No, no, not ten words per day. Uh-huh. Ten hours of studying. So Akash, I know you won many awards in Spell Bee, right? So mm-hmm. what made you to be a part of uh, Steve Harvey's uh, The Little Big Short Show? Um, 
Um, it was just a lot of hard work and lots of studying mm -hmm. effort. And eventually, I got the chance to be on the show. Huh? And then we actually made it onto the show. Uh -huh. And that would be my first ever time I would actually be on national television in front of many people. Right. And, and that, was, that was just amazing. So. And, and whenever, and whenever I got on, whenever I was on the show, it was just really fun and I, I saw you, you know, so you, you were actually, you were actually blocking his mm -hmm. cam, you were in front of him, you were jumping here and there. Um, yeah, that was from, <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. also Mr. Harvey, mm -hmm. on the first season of Little Big Shots, um, so Little Big Shots was the, was like the, the most funniest and, and like most, the best part. I know, part. He, he likes you a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And he he called me three times onto his shows. I met him three times. Yeah, and, and so it was like, so it's it like your dream times. come true when you met him, almost. Yeah, sort of. Uh, sort of. <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, to say it was obviously a dream come true. I always wanted to be on a TV show. I really wanted to become an actor. Uh huh. And I was I was I was very happy when I was finally on on national television, television and that was that was very amazing and if i'm not wrong you also wanted to become an astronaut right so it's like yeah so actor, i called it like astronaut actor, actor i call it a astro actor astro actor but recently i'm sort of thinking of creating an actronaut thing actronaut thing okay that's sort what your your uh, business card say would say yeah actronaut <laughs> sort of what 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 is astro it? actor just call it an astro actor i mean uh-huh yeah so wherein you're going to act I'm going Traveling to Traveling clean the space or no, on the Mars? No, no, no. <laughs> it's like it's it's sort of I'm going to be an astronaut and an actor. And an actor. Oh, that's a that's so a So that's thing. what I want to be when I grow up. Definitely you'll be man. Mm-hmm. So And it mm -hmm. was and when I was on Little Big Shots I always wanted to be an actor and then I was on national television. Uh -huh. And when you were first on national really television well. it did it give you goosebumps and uh, I mean like you you were really excited. How how, um, how was it? I wasn't that? like excited to the point of goosebumps. Uh -huh. I was just pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wasn't okay. excited to the point of goosebumps. Just I was pretty excited. So it was really really fun mm -hmm. meeting Mr. Harvey. Right. So I know you like to spell words a lot. How how many how many R's? In a day, do you practice spelling this? I mean, how do you? How many hours um, do you practice? Um, I can't really tell how many hours, mm -hmm. but to say for me, it's for me, it's just a lot of it's just a lot of hard work to get to this point. Mm -hmm. To say. Good. So I know you and your Very sister are also part of a program called Mensa, right? So mm -hmm. can it's you called Mensa. Mensa. So can you tell us about it? So Mensa is because this is a prodigious high IQ society mm -hmm. and 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 only kids that are in the 98th percentile mm -hmm. um, on their IQ score on their IQ scores only kids who are in the 98th percentile mm -hmm. Will be able will be eligible for Mensa, right? And, and achieving that and being a kid is pretty tough. But you did so it. So mm -hmm, I actually did it. Barely around I think one percent of the population um, of the United States probably there's only around five thousand kids that that are in Mensa, and that's very very few. So I, I'm, Compared I'm, to the total USA population, which is around 325 million, according to the 2010 census. According to 2009, I was first, you know? <laughs> Just kidding, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it would not be a tricky question. So, who was the inspiration or who actually motivated you other than your parents? 
okay i know your mom and dad are uh, uh, and your sister all three are, i mean they supported you other than these three who were it was your teacher or um, it was your uncle who was your mentor it was basically myself <laughs> i started my own interest <laughs> in like it i like that attitude man i i started my own interest in it mm -hmm. and from there mm -hmm. i started growing my knowledge and eventually i come to this point right that's a good so i know that you were actually you're going to a home school right you were uh -huh, i'm home schooled and even now you're i mean like did you go to any preschools or even now you're a home school yeah i'm still home schooled oh, like good. i've never been to an actual school uh -huh. i've like i've actually never been in like um school <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> okay. i've never been in school it's just right um I uh, I'm just homeschooled. So which is your favorite subject? Obviously spelling, right? Oh, uh, other than that. Oh, I don't right. know, everyone knows that <laughs> spelling is your I mean like you have mastered it. Other mm -hmm. than spelling which yeah, what sort of. mm -hmm. geography or history which one? Well, mm -hmm. Well, my second favorite subject is geography because without geography, I mean, well where you know well where will you know how to where to live and where and and where do you know where's where's where and mm -hmm. and just stuff like that to know the answers you you obviously need geography that's right and then my third favorite would be math mm -hmm. but aside from those um aside from educational subjects uh -huh. i also like um logos okay um so you design some logos or mm, i s yeah i design some logos such logotypes Slash oh. company symbols, oh, and that's, that's why. And you can ask me any company, and I'll tell its logo, or probably sometimes even its history. And I'm sort of a. Um, that's why my parents call me a logo master. A logo master. Sometimes. You know, to ask you, I should know something about it, which I am not, so I can't ask you right now. Well, I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's when I mean. Uh, other than spelling bee, other than uh, schooling stuff. Mm -hmm. During your free time, what do you like to do other than playing with your sister? Because you told you like playing a lot with your sister. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Uh, I mean, like which other than apart from whatever you have told so far, designing logos. Mm -hmm. So, w what is that you like to to do during your free time? There's a a lot of stuff that I like to do, so I can't really tell which ones. So okay, are when like you play, uh, so you like playing with your sister. What do you what do you guys play? Um. We just play a lot of random stuff, like and not like r random. We just like playing l lots of stuff that, mm -hmm. or lots of things that we create that that we created on our own. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's right. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So when uh, the first time when you were actually on stage with uh -huh. the kids elder than you, you were competing with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the 2016 national when the, spelling bee. Yeah. So how, what was your feeling like, and how did you feel? Um, uh, one, when you were competing them with them, how did you feel? And tell me a feeling after you won it. Well, obviously, just like any other, I wouldn't be nervous at all. Uh -huh. I'd be energetic and excited. Uh -huh. Um. So it was, and I also made friends and all. But overall, in the spelling bee, there's three major benefits of the of the Scripps National Spelling Bee, and I, I'm going to be talking about those uh -huh. um, now. So the first one is that it obviously improves your knowledge base. Right. You'll learn a lots of new words, like for example, um, inviscate, mm -hmm. which was the round two word in the 2016 bee that I got, mm -hmm. and I spelled the word correctly. So you would learn a lots of new words. It, it just improves your knowledge base. And that also helps with whatever you want to pursue when you grow up, because wherever you want to pursue in career, you'll already have a first-hand basis right. of, the career, of what you want to pursue because of, obviously, the words. Right. The second one is that um, when you misspell a word, You'll you'll learn how to handle the defeat and mm -hmm. and loss, and this is like a real life situation. It 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 
It helps you to how to how to deal with the real life situations. Okay. And the third one, and the most fun part is that you get to make good friends for life. Right. Which right. means that when I go to the 2018 Scripps National Spelling Bee, I'll be meeting all of my friends that Old I... Old friends, which you met in the previous one. Which I made in 2016 <laughs> National 2016. Spelling Bee, obviously. Right. And it's only a barely new faces, some new faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So when you won against it, when you got qualified to the national, national level, so mm -hmm. how, how did you feel? And what were you feeling? You were excited, I know. Other than excited, tell me. Um, you were, you're feeling great, right? You're proud? Uh, um, not really to say proud, uh -huh. but I was happy that I, that, I, that I won that one and that I got to go to the National Spelling Bee because that would be my first time actually being on, on a live stage right. with with all, with lots of other kids uh -huh. competing as only a first grader being the youngest competitor mm -hmm. i was i was excited but at the same time but so, you know okay. so how how, how did your uh, sister it. feel when uh, she came to know that you were a part of that um my sister was was also was just the same feeling as <laughs> me except she was more excited mm -hmm. Basically, she was she was much more excited than than me. Than than me. I, right. I was I was trying I was trying to work I was working I was doing I was um, studying my best mm -hmm. I was doing my best and okay and uh, that's right yeah. so and uh, so tomorrow you're going to be in Cleveland right you're going to be part of the International Film Festival right yeah. in Montreal right? so can you just tell us uh, about it so. This is the 42nd Cleveland International Film Festival and there's there's a there's an amazing documentary film called Breaking the Bee mm -hmm. which I am featured in. Mm -hmm. And 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 this in this documentary film um shows talks about the the winning streak of Indian American children in the Scripps National Spelling Bee, even though they only make up, even though the, the Indian American population only makes up around 1% of right. the total U.S. population. Right. And since 1991, 18 out of the 22 um, spellers, out of the 22 champions have, have been Indian Americans, mm -hmm. and in this film, Breaking the Bee, in this documentary film, Breaking the Bee, um, follows four four Indian American kids and their families on their and and I am one of those four kids. Okay. So, so. I'll so so the cool thing is that. I was selected for, I was I was the poster boy basically. Okay. I was on the poster. So you. It's me on the poster. So you. Which was actually, which was, actually, pretty amazing. Amazing. I was, yeah. I was pretty happy when, when I found out that I I was I was the, on the poster. Okay. So your your dream and partial dream came true, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's my it's actually this is. This what was like wanted? main dream come true. I really wanted to be in a film like, for example, in a documentary film like, for example, Spellbound about the 1999 National Spelling Bee, mm -hmm. or A Kill of the Bee, mm -hmm. which was a 2006 film based on the National Spelling Bee. I wanted to be in one of those f documentary films or just films that had to do with the bee. And now that Breaking the Bee that the Breaking the Bee documentary film is releasing, and I am a part of it, it's just a dream come true. No worries. Uh, it's only just the, the remaining part of your dream of astronaut, it'll also come true, no well, worries. Well, yeah, yeah, obviously. It'll come true, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. okay. And, so, well. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you want to tell uh, to your uh, 
to the kids of your age any message or an, not a message i won't say message okay anything that you want to suggest them how to, how to get prepared how to prepare themselves to improve their concentration or anything or well nah, you'll leave it up to them wait what I wouldn't leave it up to them, obviously. <laughs> I'll give some suggestions. Definitely, that's a good spirit. But to, <laughs> but to say, it's mm -hmm. just, you, it's sort of like, what I usually do is, once I, I usually get, usually I just start off the day by, by, you know, doing regular, you know, brushing my teeth and doing break fast, but um, after that, I will usually start ahead and start studying, <laughs> just That's like it. anyways. Um, because because there, I mean, as time goes, as time goes on, you need to study more. You need to study more things. So what I would say, try to get try to um, get as as much information as you, as you can. Um, into your brain before your spelling bee, and because as time as as the time between the be, between the, time the current is. the current the the present mm -hmm. and and your upcoming spelling bee, as the time of that gets shorter and shorter, there you you will obviously have completed more things but at the same time you also need to get um don't try to um jam in everything uh -huh. try to organize stuff evenly try to organize things evenly and then eventually you'll get a, a good study plan so um, a major thing is to obviously have a study plan okay Having the study plan just makes it Ma makes, makes it everything clear. E everything easy and clear for it. Yeah, it's, it makes things much more much. simple and clear, uh -huh. and you know what to do at what time. It's sort of like a school. Okay, uh, so I mean, like, I, I mean, I'll conclude this. But before I conclude, I have some spellings with me which I would like you to ask you. Okay. Uh, I know Go you. Ahead. There's one word which you know. It's it's. Uh, it's bigger than I guess this much. It's super. I don't know even even if I can pronounce it correctly. Okay, and okay. I know you 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 sing that word also. It's super califragilistic exp. <laughs> okay. I don't uh, laugh. You know, did I did I pronounce it wrong? Um, it's pronounced super califragilistic exp. Uh huh. Um, I would definitely ask my cameraman to cut cut this short. You know, because what? I couldn't pronounce it right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> So the word is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and obviously it, it is well known to a lot of, to you know, a before, lot of, bef yeah. bef before you spell well it, known. can you tell me the meaning of it? Well, this word is actually is actually found in the 1964. Um, the 1964 movie called Mary Poppins, mm -hmm. in which one of the songs. Is obviously supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and since and to say the meaning is well, wonderfully great, just wonderful. Wonderful. Because all of the roots in the word have to do with being cute or being like just being beautiful. Okay. When you said the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. I, kn I mean, like, I, I knew you'd be definitely knowing it. That's fine. But anyhow, congrats. All the best Thank for you. your future endeavors. Hope we meet again. Thank you. And though. hope again uh, you'll become the nationalist, 2018 nationalist. And again, I'll get an interview, a chance to have a chat with you. Thank you, Madhavar. <laughs> Thank you. So, viewers, that's it from Desi Plaza Studio. Hope you guys enjoyed this special show with the special talented kid, Akash. Next time, I'll be again with you with one more celebrity. Till then, signing off your mother. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>